Did you know that Hello Neighbor had a secret game that was never released? Well, they did, but how was it discovered? Why did it exist, and what happened to it? Well, for some context, the original Hello Neighbor game was incredibly successful, albeit for a lot of negative reasons. But afterward, with a slightly negative reputation, the Hello Neighbor devs were tasked with making another game that still managed to be just as popular. One of the games that ended up actually seeing the light of day would be named Secret Neighbor. And this game was basically Among Us, but in the neighbor's own home, and while the game on the surface was just a regular old mafia simulator turned video game. It actually contained tons of secrets relating to Hello Neighbor, some as abstract as literally launching and going to the moon, but that's a subject for another video. Anyway, randomly one day on a random board inside of the game, there was a secret message that read the words slash HGP. This phrase or code was tossed around in a few ways across the game, but it wouldn't take long for people to realize that this wasn't a code, but rather a URL. And when plugging it into the end of the secret neighbor website, it would reveal a message that said, don't press that button. Upon, of course, pressing said button, we would download a file named hgp.7z that upon opening would launch ourselves a secret never before seen game. But there was a problem. In order to open the files, we needed an encryption password that nobody knew the code to. However, upon this interesting discovery, something new would happen. Secret neighbor would receive an update and there would be a random locked door that would suddenly appear. And while most doors in the Secret Neighbor game contained a number in them to which a corresponding key cord could unlock it, this door just had a question mark making it seemingly impossible to open. However, unexpectedly out of nowhere, a random crow inside of the game would appear in the sky flying around, and upon shooting the bird down and killing it like good citizens, we'd find that he was holding the exact hidden key card that we had been looking for for unlocking this door. Now upon opening this door, there wasn't very much. There was a hidden teleporter that we could presumably use, However, it was broken and under construction. But once again, as updates went on and on, this teleporter got bigger and bigger until eventually it was actually finished and was ready to use in-game. However, at this point, there was another problem with the teleporter because it didn't have any power. And if we looked around, we noticed there was a broken windmill that presumably would have provided this thing power, so we had to fix it. And with some digging, like literal digging around the house, people were able to find the missing pieces to the windmill and fix it up to power said teleporter. Now, to make a long story short, with all the pieces finally put together, the players were able to complete the easter egg and turn on the teleporter during a storm that they could activate through an entirely separate easter egg. But upon using this teleporter, they were warped into a random room that seemed to not really do all that much. However, if we look closely at what happens inside of this room, we could see a four-colored code slowly appear inside of the game. And once people started to pick up on this, there was actually a printer in-game to where you could enter these codes in. And so naturally, people began to enter these colored codes in, and what would it give them? Four singles singular numbers. And you want to know how many they needed for the actual password? 80. So basically the players had to redo the same easter egg 20 different times getting new codes that would combine to this humongous number. And upon going back to the encrypted file and putting it in, it would take us to the official launch page of this brand new game where we could finally load it up. This game was presumably called Hello Guess at the time just based on this weird icon that comes with the game download. And after all this work, here is what the un covered game actually looked like. It was dark, blue, and set in this weird creepy theme park area that was interesting to say the least. This game played a lot different than any other Hello Neighbor entry too. Upon exiting the little hut that we abruptly spawn in, we are met by a little unnamed crow figure who runs away from us upon looking at him. Upon searching around a little bit in this game, you could find a power down roller coaster and it was going to be our goal to try and turn it back on and ride it to escape the theme park and avoid the crow character. But wait, avoid the crow character? They seem nice and if anything scared of us. Well, what they don't tell you is that this crow is actually incredibly sneaky. And when you're not looking, he actually sneaks up on the player and comes after them from behind. Or in other words, to make it simple, it was basically just mimicking the weeping angels that I'm sure you guys have all heard of and putting it into an actual game. Now, just looking at the title, I'm assuming you can already tell that the game is almost embarrassingly limited. Most things either have a blank texture or just no texture at all. And besides the player and the crow, basically nothing moves in the entire game. But despite the clear lack of stuff put into the title, there's actually a real and consistent plot to it. So essentially, the mechanics of the game are as simple as every night we spend our time as 
the security guard of this park, trying to, as mentioned, power on this roller coaster to get us to actually get out of it. And that's done by filling up the gas tank that is in the power room for the ride. However, in order to fill it up, that brings in our next mechanic, which is the item shop. Every single time we spawn into our shift, there is a set time limit that we can play the game before the sun inevitably rises and our shift is over. However, in between shifts, we get to enter a store where we can purchase various items to help us out throughout the game, whether it's flashlights, fuses, or for our case, gas tanks. And upon spending enough time and money accumulating gas tanks, eventually we're able to actually fill up the roller coaster successfully. And after doing a quick mission where we spin all the pipe gauges to keep the ride running, eventually it fully powers on. The next thing, of course, that we need to do is then actually ride the ride. And during the roller coaster, there's actually some pretty good animations done here while also giving us some lore secrets that we may have needed for determining the story of the game. At the end of the ride, we are dropped off next to the very final location where we are then tasked with getting fuses to power an entirely separate ride. And this is when things begin to get a little tricky because the player from this point has to manage to purchase enough gas tanks for the first ride and then enough fuses for the second ride while also surviving. And while on its own, that wouldn't really be that difficult. After a few days, we actually run out of time and the guest himself will play a cutscene where he blows up this massive wall, destroying the secrets that may have hid behind it. But assuming you are able to get the fuses, the player could simply put them in and flip the switch to activate the second ride to come in and manually destroy the wall in a pretty epic cutscene that reveals to us the biggest secret of all. It reveals the Mayak House, which you may not be very familiar with, and to be honest, I'm not either, but apparently it's pretty popular among Hella Neighbor lore junkies, and that's about all for the title gameplay-wise. But while the title itself doesn't really seem to be all that much, the mystery of this game is where things start to get a little bit interesting. Because after a little while of this game's existence, all traces of this title were seemingly wiped off the internet. And a couple months after the secret game was initially discovered, new updates would come out to the original Secret Neighbor game, making it entirely impossible to solve the code any longer. Or in other words, the only way to really play the game legitly nowadays is to actually know somebody who solved the code. And the only reason I was able to play is because I knew one of these very few select people to ever actually solve it by the name of Devil Ninja, who gave me the password to play the game once more after it was wiped from the internet. And what makes the game itself even more interesting is that even though it's incredibly bare as a title, I won't lie to you, this is my favorite Hello Neighbor game of all time. I even said that in a video that's like two years old at this point. And the reason why I say this is because this this game fundamentally is the best one to ever be released. I've already talked about the mechanics of the game, and in my opinion, especially for a demo, they are done incredibly well. The Weeping Angel mechanic of the crow actually works pretty successfully, especially for the environment it's put in where there's a lot of tight corners, so you're always checking your back to make sure he's not sneaking up behind you. And also, my favorite part, this game is the scariest Hello Neighbor game of all time, no question. There's something that feels so lonely about this title when you're playing it, because there's absolutely absolutely no dialogue or tutorials or pretty much anything inside of it. There's just you the player and the guest with no guides or anything to help you out. It's all up to you to figure out what to do from start to finish which makes it a crazy horror exploration experience that I definitely recommend. Also the ambience of this game is literally perfect, just listen to this. That creaking of the abandoned roller coaster while there basically being nothing else around the player makes it absolutely incredible and this environment is really what makes games scary. It's very similar to games like Iron Lung where all the horror elements come from being all by yourself in a really enclosed area where you're just terrified of what might come next. Not to mention that when the guest does approach you, you can actually hear him slowly creeping up pretty much being the only sudden noise in the game causing panic every time you hear him chirping around. And although honestly the jump scare itself is pretty weak, this game doesn't thrive in taking cheap jump scare opportunities or anything, but rather building a perfect atmosphere that is immaculate. And honestly, all the mystery that built up to this game's super limited release makes it 10 times scarier. You have to download some random unnamed file, enter in a secret password that only a couple people found out, and then you're just greeted by the game with nothing else to do but play. There's not much known purpose of this game today because this map would never end up being used again, and eventually the project itself 
itself would be entirely abandoned with a real more polished version of Hello Guest that released that year. That of which taking a much more commercial approach to the title like what they've done for all their other games up to this point. But even though the game is lost and entirely obscure, this title still holds an insanely special spot in my heart because for once Hello Neighbor wasn't trying to make the next viral game that Markiplier or MatPat will make a video about. It was a small encrypted game that maybe like 500 people ever actually played, and it wasn't the kid-friendly over-commercialized versions of Hello Neighbor that we see today, but rather just the Hello Neighbor team trying to make an insane game, and I'd say this is when they did it the best.